I'm Paula Marcoux, author of Cooking with Fire, a book that explores live fire cooking as a means of having fun and experiencing new flavors, inspired by the techniques and recipes of historic and prehistoric cooks. Today, we're going to roast a pork loin on a spit. It's an ancient technique, it's simple, it does not require a lot of equipment, and it yields fabulous results. I'm going to season this lovely pork roast according to a recipe from a 14th century English cookbook. Not because we're recreating a medieval dinner, but really because the recipe is just terrific. I'm pounding together coriander seeds, caraway seeds, and black peppercorns with garlic and sea salt. A splash of red wine loosens it up. The ingredient list is in the book, or you can download the recipe at the end of the video. Now that I've thoroughly slathered the mixture all over this roast, and now I'm going to let it sit, let it rest for a couple of hours. Live fire roasting requires coals, so more than an hour before I plan to put my roast on, I've started a fire using hardwood. I'm using oak and maple because that's what we have here, but you can use any hardwood you like to make the coals that will actually roast the meat. Now to start roasting. I'm going to use a low-tech spit I've made with a few cheap parts. First, I ordered these inexpensive rotisserie parts online. I bought a piece of square stock for a few bucks at a big box home improvement store and used a grinder to put a point on it and take the edges down a bit. All you really need is something to securely hold and turn the meat at a correct distance from the heat. In this case, about seven to nine inches from the coals. Now pay attention to your fire. Get in the habit of feeding it from the back and periodically robbing coals from beneath it in the front. Turn the spit every few minutes to keep the roast cooking evenly. When it sizzles and begins to make some drippings, capture them in a dripping pan. If the drippings begin to scorch at all, add a little hot water to the dripping pan. Baste the roast from time to time with the drippings if you like. Observe the meat as it goes from pinkish red to creamy to golden brown, and as it shrinks and tightens. These are all signs of cooking. In the best hearth conditions, it'll take between one and two hours to cook a roast like this. Look carefully at the roast, turn it to advantage, and move coals around to advance cooking in any places which have fallen behind. When the pork looks all crispy and sizzling like it's something you'd like to eat, take its internal temperature with a meat thermometer. When it registers 145 degrees Fahrenheit, remove the roast to a heated platter and keep it warm for a 10 to 15 minute rest. Meanwhile, have a look at the drippings. Spoon off any excess fat, add some stock if you like, and another splash of red wine, and bring to a simmer, scraping up at the bottom of the pan and stirring. Simmer for a few minutes, correct the seasoning, and then just keep warm while you carve the roast into thin slices. Our finished fire roasted pork tastes just great with sides of polenta and braised garlicky greens. We roasted our pork loin indoors today, but in nice weather, this same method works just as well in an outdoor fire pit. All you really need is a good bed of coals and a basic spit. We humans have over a million years experience at this, and it's still great fun to take on a cooking project sitting around a nice fire with a bunch of friends. Indoors or out, there's nothing like cooking with fire. Many more recipes, tools, and techniques from the past and present, plus stories of live fire cooking through the ages, can be found in my book, Cooking with Fire.